Good to be with you. Good morning, Baltimore. Christian Faith Center. Good to be with you again. This is the day the Lord has made. It's no accident that I'm here this morning. It's no accident that you're here this morning. He's had it planned. Teddy, I want you to do me a favor. Come up here and take these two chairs and just set them right out front here. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, when I heard about Paul's severe challenge, I uh, alerted my prayer team, Marcia, and so people all over, really the world, are praying for Paul. I called, I called Don Moen yesterday afternoon and talked, left a voicemail for him, he returned a voicemail for me, and he said he would get his people on that, and he said, please send my love to the Santos family, he loves ministering here and loves you people so much. You see, we are a family, aren't we? We really are. Oh 
praise this morning. His love endures forevermore. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Goodness is not just something he does. He is good. That is the nature of Jehovah. He's love. That's the nature. That's who he is. That's the being of him is love. It's goodness. It's faithfulness. God is faithful. Every single day, every single moment of every single hour, he is faithful. He cannot not be faithful. It's who he is. It's who he was before time existed. He's always been faithful. This morning, to Paul and to the Santos family, he is faithful. Do you hear me? Now, I, I asked Teddy to set these chairs out here because they're for Jesus and Paul this morning. Lord told me, see, there's something about the power of song. Sing, O barren one, you who have not born children, sing for joy. We're going to sing over our friend this morning. We're going to sing the healing power of God into the hospital room this morning. Paul and Silas, beaten to a pulp within fragments of their very life, thrown into the damp dungeon, all looked lost. Silas goes, you got us into this, Paul. <laughs> what are we going to do now? Paul said, I think, I think we need, I think we need, great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father. It says they sang a hymn. When all else is gone, sing to the life giver. Sing to your deliverer. Sing to the author of life. Paul is barren this morning of health in his body right now. Listen, I don't know. The Lord may take him home. Forgive me for saying that. That's not my business. My business is to contend for the life of my brother through faith, through the song of the Spirit, through declaring, declaring the word of truth over his life. If God takes him, God has a better plan. But our job is to contend for the faith. Contend for the kingdom. Listen, by default, the enemy will always win. If you don't put any any battle into it, you'll lose every single time. We are in a battle in this life. If you don't admit that, you are not playing with real cards. It's a battle. I am in a battle every single day of my life in this journey, in this walk. The devil hates my music. He hates the anointing that sets people free and heals bodies. He comes across, he comes at us every single direction he can. And he is a loser. And he has been defeated. And we are the healed and we are not the sick. We are the above, we are not the beneath. We lend and borrow not. We are the head and not the tail. All because of what Jesus has already accomplished at the cross. So this morning... As we sing a little bit, and we worship a little bit, when we get to those, just that time, when we have just that, that spontaneous song of the Lord, just want you just to focus on this. Jesus is sitting up here with Paul. Jesus is sitting in that hospital room with Paul right now. And, and Father's got this. Father has got this in his hand. Fret not. 
we do not have fear. There's no place for fear in the body of Christ. Praise God. I was with my cousin and her daughter last night for dinner. Often when we come to Baltimore, we make plans to, to eat with the, that family member. Her daughter is 36. Her name is Alice. Alice had a severe stroke last June. Only 1% of people who have strokes have this type of stroke. Of that 1%, only 1% of them survive. And if they do survive, they are paralyzed for life. It's that severe of a stroke, the damage that it does. 36 years old. We begin to pray. As soon as I heard that, her, her stepfather posted it on Facebook. Please pray for Alice. She's had severe stroke. The doctors have said she probably won't survive the night. We prayed. What else can you do but look to the author of life and say, Jesus, in your mercy and in your power, do what only you can do. We take authority as we know to take. We bind the spirit of death. We loose the spirit of life. Come and replace the natural of the earth with the supernatural of heaven. The next morning, Alice had no symptoms of any stroke whatsoever. She walked out of that hospital two days later. My God is an awesome God. The doctors, her mom told me, he said, they're still talking about this at the hospital seven months later. We don't see this. This doesn't happen. But it does when you take your eyes off the natural and you say, there's a higher power. There's one who does the unthinkable. There's one who doesn't know impossible. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I hope that encourages you as it encourages me this morning. Praise Jesus. Lord, let your glory fill this house. You deserve the glory. the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands as we lift your holy name. You deserve the
began this morning. I felt you. And that's miraculous in itself. That the King of Glory would come and be in this little house today. What a miracle. What a great blessing. We give you praise for your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You can be seated. And please, anytime you need to stand up, you don't need an official invitation. <laughs> Sometimes when I get going, I can't worship sitting down. I just have to get closer to heaven or something. I don't know. Sometimes you just have to. But if you're standing up so long and you're thinking about how much your feet hurt more than Jesus, it's probably okay to sit down so that we can keep the main thing, the main thing here. Sing, O oh barren one. If there are areas of barrenness in your life this morning, it could be a, a wayward child that's not walking with Jesus. Sing over them today. Sing the redemption of God over them this morning. Sing Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. I always see the banner over us as love. And I just like to just cover somebody with this banner. And sing to Jehovah Nisi. If there's unrighteousness in your life someplace, sing.
Sing to Jehovah, sing to the Lord our righteousness. Begin to exalt Him over that area of your life where there may be a besetting sin that nobody else knows about but God and you. Sing to Jehovah, sing to you, and just let the righteousness of God flush out that which does not belong. Is there chaos in your life? Is it just all kinds of confusion and noise? Sing to Jehovah, Shalom. The Lord, our peace. I've done that. I remember on Christmas Day when my son, with his brand new 21 speed bicycle, locked the brakes and it threw him and his little 12 year old body with arms that were like my thumb. It seemed like that's about how big his arms were. And it threw him over those handlebars and he landed on his arm and bone came out here and bone came out there. And I got a call from a jogger who was jogging by and saw this happen right off of a busy thoroughfare. And I got in the van and I drove over as quickly as I could with my oldest son. And we got there and Drew was laying on the pavement just practically in shock. And all I could do <laughs> as a daddy was just bend over his life. I didn't touch him, I just bent over his body. And I said, Jesus, peace to my son. And I saw that body just settle down instantly as the Lord was in immediate attendance. He is a present help, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have to go to a church service. We don't have to call a priest. My God is a present help in the time of trouble. He is ever present and a refuge for your soul. The very next day after Drew came home from that com complex surgery, he was laying on the couch and the Lord said, the enemy sought his life yesterday. But my grace and my mercy sought his life in a greater way. That's the lover of our souls talking. God has this thing. God has that, that obstacle in your life, that mountain that's before you right now. Just let him have it and sing over your soul. Don't look at the problem. Look at the solution. Nothing has changed in heaven at the throne of God. The World Trade Center crumbled. His throne didn't even vibrate. He is firmly established over the earth. The earth spins like a toy in his hand. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. He's loved us in Jeremiah already with an everlasting love. It endures every generation. Oh, what great love. And I'm so glad he's come to be with us in this house today. Lord, would you have your way with every single life. There are visitors here. There are newborn Christians here. There are people who have served you for 60 years. We all come from different places with different histories and experiences, but today we are one family. So come breathe upon me, breath of God, breathe upon me.
begin to thank Jehovah Jireh that his hand is not short. I begin to sing. Actually, I was the only one singing for a good while. But I sang over that barrenness in my life. I've never been a prosperity teacher, although I believe we are supposed to live in prosperity as the favor and blessing of God. I just don't think it's supposed to be what we go after. I think it's a gift and a blessing from the Lord. If that's what you're after, get all you can because there's nothing waiting for you on the other side. Sorry, but that's just how it is. Your treasure is where your heart is. I want to lay up treasures up there. 
So I just begin to sing, thank you, Lord. I know that you are my provider. My help comes from the Lord. And you shall supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And for several minutes, that's just how it was. I, don't, I won't say that I felt a presence come down and shake the car or anything like that. But I went home and as God is my witness, three days later, there was a check for $3,000 in my mailbox from an, un, an unexpected source. Two days after that, there was another check for $3,000 in my mailbox from another unexpected source. Another $2,000 a few days later, there was $8,000 that came out of nowhere in a matter of five or six days. I have no doubt that that was a result of a prophetic, a prophetic act of faith. If you do nothing, nothing will happen. If you aim for nothing, you'll hit it, won't you, friends? So aim for something in our lives. It's 2019. Aim for something. Are you believing God for one area of the unthinkable in your life? If not, find that place. And just believe Him for the ridiculous. God is a God of the impossible. Oh, but it can't be done. Who says? Whose report will you believe? It's impossible to get $8,000 from, from nowhere. I mean, times were bad. I put on my best suit and I went to every hotel in town saying, can I play in your lobby? For, you know, for a hundred bucks? You do what you have to do. Something about us humans, we like to eat. And I couldn't even get hired by a hotel. God was doing something. He was preparing this heart so that a few years later he would open up a worldwide ministry. But he had to get the heart right first. I hate when he does that. <laughs> He's like, Lord, it seems like we could go a much smoother path if you would just listen to my ideas for a while. <laughs> Have you ever thought about this, God? I mean, I just wrote a book, and I'm sorry that it's not here today. I brought 25 copies with me because that's all they could get printed in time. But we were in Washington, D.C., and a little group of about 60 people bought 25 in about 10 minutes. So I didn't have any to bring to Baltimore Christian Faith Center. But we'll get some here. But it's just, it's, it's called 30 Seconds in His Presence. will change your life forever. And it's just a lot of what God has shown me over the years as being a worshiper and a worship leader and experiences in the very manifest presence of God. I'll read a little bit of that book tonight, maybe in our service, and just give you an idea for it. And we can certainly send some here. It should be out in the next week or so. But I want people to catch it. This, this glory, face-to-face -face presence of God. It absolutely turns you upside down and inside out. And you never can go back to life as usual once you've had that experience. And it's my heart as we travel the world for people to enter into that place where he just does such a miraculous work in their lives. And it just comes from just giving yourself to him. Holding nothing back. You kind of have to abandon something to grab onto something. And when you just let go of you and grab onto him, boy, the results are just so great. They're just so great. Praise God. So here's a new little song, it just came, I guess for the new year, it just came last week. It goes like this, this is a little love song from my heart to his, it's taken from the song of song. I have found the one who my soul
Honor to your name. Honor to your name. Honor to your name. For all the dishonoring of your name this week, we give you honor this week. spirit this morning. I certainly have standing up here. He's all over it. Hallelujah. He's had this service circled on heaven's calendar. <laughs> Praise God. Take your seats just one more time. I'm going to turn it back over to Marcia in just a moment or whoever. And um, we have CDs back in the back. If you haven't gotten All the Glory, which came out last April, it is probably the most powerful CD God's ever given us. We went down to Trinidad, to Trinidad Christian Center, and recorded a beautiful evening with about 1,800 worshipers. And His presence is just so rich. Remember the old song, Thou Art Worthy? Wait till you hear it. It'll just become all new again to you. And God's power is all over it. We have cards back there where you can become a glory partner. I see the Smiths sitting back here who are glory partners with our ministry. It just means that they believe in what we do and they want to help us take His presence to all the world. When we go to Africa, I'm going to Uganda in March. Uh, we're going to Europe. We go to South Africa every couple of years. They can't usually afford to pay us anything to get us there. And so we need help from people who understand that people are starved for His presence, begging for it. I get invitations every week. I could spend the whole 12 months outside the U.S. ministering around the world. We just can't possibly do that. But when we go, we like to go for two or three weeks. We do about 10 or 12 concerts in an area, in a country, go from city to city. And I'm telling you, people drive three and four hours to come to the concert. They're waiting two hours before it starts. They're that hungry for His glory. They're kind of tired with church as usual. They want the real deal. And so the Lord uses us in those places. Now in Uganda, this is kind of exciting. The, 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 the man who's bringing me in says, Listen, the, the president of Uganda has been listening to your music. He will come to this service. The parliament will be in attendance at this service if you will come and just lead us into the presence of God. Now the Lord spoke to me years ago through several prophetic words that He would put my anointing before heads of state and leaders of nations. And this is that beginning to come forth. You see, God has a time and a season for everything. Don't get discouraged if you don't see His hand coming through with the vision that He put in your heart. It will yet come to pass. It took 28 years when he called me into ministry and showed me leading worship with thousands of people. It took 28 years for that vision to be fulfilled. But there was a perfect season and a perfect time for everything under the sun. It's a new year. Read Proverbs, uh, Ecclesiastes 3. There is a time for everything. And ask God in your life, what time is it? We might talk a little more about that tonight. Come out tonight. I know maybe some of you don't usually come. Come out. We won't be long. Maybe an hour service tonight. And we'll worship and we'll talk a little bit and just have a good time with the Lord. We can come and we can lay on the floor up here. Nobody will kick you out if you want to do that. You can go dance in the back if you want. This is a place of freedom. Amen? All right. I'm done. God bless you. You come.